So we've pretty much ridden about 16 miles today. Um, we're two miles from the truck. That really means it was an awesome day. crazy to think that uh, for the last two days I've spent, um, let's see here, 10 hours on one plane, six hours on another plane, six hour drive to get here. Um, so, oh yeah, no sleep, threw up seven times, and, but now I'm here feeling better and get to ride a 2013 boosted pro. So, hopefully it's all worth it. What time is it? Huh? The sun never shines here. We are in Priscola, Russia. We just traveled for six hours on one of the most bumpy roads I've ever been on in my life. Planes, trains, automobiles, just to ride snowmobile. That's pretty damn funny because that's exactly what's happening to us. <laughs> yeah. Well, it felt exactly like home. First till, everybody's stuck. That's good. <laughs> He's the one who made me puke in a BMW. thing last night. Thank you. 
That was really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Russian slip. He's <laughs> unique. America, as we know it, has finished from benching and flailing. And it's a long, long way down. The parachutes are gone. So grab a spot. And it's a long, long free fall. No signs of soft landing. Fuck Rob. <laughs> He's on the other end going, what? Somebody just called me a bad dog and did not look down and wrong foot forward. <laughs> Come to the door, you're gonna have to protect me. <laughs> just jokes, just jokes. <laughs> the move that I've perfected over the past few years is called the pin and wiggle. This is a move that I like to call it never giving up or never letting the mountain defeat you. And, and you're trying to do basically anything and everything in your power to not get stuck and yet still continue and keep your momentum. You're wide open throttle, you're barely crawling, barely going. And by wiggling the snowmobile, you're basically kind of packing the snow in, in different places and, and just trying to get out of that, that trench or that rut that you're creating with the sled. Every time you rock the sled back and forth, it's almost like you're taking weight off of one of the running boards to transfer onto the other. And so what that does, again, is helping to get weight off of the snowmobile, allow the sled to kind of climb up on top, or in some cases, you're actually wiggling to so you can dig down and get to either a harder layer of snow underneath or scraping and crawling to get to logs or rocks or whatever, whatever I can to, to again, not get stuck. I think when I use this move the most is right when you're just about to get stuck. Gravity is defeating you, the snow's too deep, and most people will turn out before that. What I like to do is just keep going and really shake and wiggle that thing to keep my momentum all while still being pinned. Another good time to use this technique is when you're stuck and someone's giving you a ski pole, just shaking and rocking and pushing that sled all while wide open, you only get one chance at that snow that's underneath your track. So when someone gives you the one, two, three pull, you pin and shake and wiggle that thing and you'll pop right out. Here's a perfect example of when this maneuver will get you out of trouble. Here, Brett got hung up a little bit and he was technically stuck. Most people would have stopped, got their shovel out, started digging. What Brett did is he jumped back on the sled, pinned it, and just shook that thing. And it's amazing what it'll do. It actually just started to get up out of the snow, up on top, stayed pinned, looked ahead, and out he went. One of the saddest things I see from a lot of riders is what I call going down with the ship, where they just are standing on the sled, they're losing the battle to gravity in deep snow, and they just get stuck. Well, that's where the pin and wiggle technique comes in. Another maneuver that works really well, and we've talked about this in the past, is basically pedaling. And what pedaling does is uh, it's getting the weight off of the snowmobile. And you're, you're doing that a little bit while you're wiggling the snowmobile as well. You're kind of rocking it back and forth, changing where the weight is on the sled. I don't know how many times I've seen many of my riders, all they had to do was take one step off the, the snowmobile, give it a pedal, and that sled would have come up just that little bit it needed to not get stuck. Don't go down with the ship. Do whatever you can to get unstuck, whether it's pin and wiggle, getting your weight off of the sled, or running next to the sled. Whatever you need to do, that's what needs to happen so you don't get stuck.
Come on, dude. I'm trying to post some pictures on Facebook here. You need you need Ryan McCall's help to post stuff on Facebook? No, I'm doing it right here. <laughs> and I'm FaceTiming, and I'm emailing, and I'm booking flights. Someone's got to work around here to pay for broken bumpers from the filmers. <laughs> Brett Rasmussen broke that bumper. What? Even worse. Who would have ever thought that a 54-year-old dude would be sponsored by a manufacturer be getting all of these sleds and having people from all over the world come and ride with him. That is so, so cool. Brett's got a lot of little tricks when it comes to teaching people and you know I think that's what's been so good for him is that he has found a way or figured out a way for him to be able to present all of these things that we keep throwing to people. I mean there's so much information that needs to be understood and learned to be able to do it and you know he's able to break it down in a clean and simple way so people can understand it. Thank you. Through though, yeah. there's so many times I'm like, we're done, we're done, and then he'd like knock it out and then find another one. I was like, okay, sweet, we're still going. <laughs> it was awesome. Did you, you deserve that one. <laughs> I don't know what you were trying. That's like, that's like sled neck maneuver. How do you like that save, huh? What do you call that move? Uh, that would be a Jenkins save. <laughs> Sanchez. Are you still recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. These guys are like... <clears throat> okay. With you, girl. Yeah, oh man, I was wrecked to go so excited. Talk up this time, you stop on the rock, cause you bet I'll be a rub up your big B and get me pack up, go back to my house, shock up, I'll give you a pack, you can smack up your best belly, but they shock up, I'm like a rhino, so buck up. Yes, I get fresh with you, girl.
cameraman said this is a bad idea. I pulled it off though. Can I get fresh with you? Can I take it to As you can tell, this year's solo is going pretty well. I think it's only broken like one part, which is not much. With you, girl. Turn on this talk up this time. You stop all the rock, cause you better rise up and rub up your big B. Baby, pack up, go back to mine. Now we shock up and leave your party. Let's smack up your best baby. Let's try to shock up on like a rhino. So, buck up. Get <laughs> this is what it's about, having fun, doing stupid things. Yes. I'm so stoked on this. We're going to talk about a little something I like to call angle of the dangle. When you're side hilling, I try to keep this, the nose of the sled high, which allows me to go slower. Anytime you start speeding up going across the hill, then your sled is basically horizontal with the hill and you'll lose your side hill and you'll end up turning down. And um, my option of turning down is like way down there on the letter scale, like option F. All this really is, is trying to outsmart the mountain. The mountain is always trying to defeat you. You're trying to defy gravity. You're trying to ignore all the rules of big, deep, heavy snow and all of that stuff. Keeping your sled the right angle on the hill, what that does is it allows you to, to ride slower. A lot of people always ask me, well, how the heck do you know where you're going when you're, when you're side hilling and boondocking through the hills? Well, I technically don't, but what I'm doing is because I'm going slow enough to read the terrain and pick different lines, that's what allows me to do that. A lot of the times, the nose of my sled is actually going up kind of high and it's like, oh, I'm just about to get stuck. I go into my counter steer position, roll the sled back down the hill just a little bit. I'm not turning all the way down. Again, my option is never to go down. My option is to traverse the side of the hill, looking for a spot where I can either turn back up the hill because again, you don't achieve for the low mark on the hill to go to the bottom. You always want to get to the top of the hill. I think the biggest key is knowing that exact moment of when you need to turn the front end of the sled down. And what we see from a lot of people is they have a problem defining that moment where either the sled gets going stuck straight up and down or it starts going stuck straight up and down, they overreact and the nose of the sled goes too far down and down the hill they go. The key is, is to get into that near vertical situation counter steer get the sled on its side panel and you're almost doing like a mini elevator it's very small we're only talking a few feet to get back down into the meat of the hill and and correcting the attitude of the snowmobile to traverse the side hill that's why you need to be slow in control and have the angle of the dangle right <laughs> If you want to be on top of your game, you're going to have to outdo him, and uh, he definitely works hard at this. The year is 1940. And something isn't right. Yeah.
puts on thousands of miles during the year of technical riding and training for the hill climbs. Training day? Yes, training day. Secret spot? Secret go. spot. Practice for a little bit. You couldn't sleep for the awful fright that kept you up in bed last night. But while curious shape shift in the dark, they vanish with the sunrise spot. racers uh, in the sport of hill climbing we definitely try to improve and get faster and what we do is we go set up courses in the mountains and uh, try to make it look similar to a race course in the sport of rim shots. Uh, lots of holes, lots of grooves, berms, uh, just try to pound through it and uh, make a decent course. Every little bit helps. Uh, I, I guess seat time is the main thing that really helps out and, and a little practice. cross training for hill climbing. For Jackson, of course, like Jackson is lots of big walls, big head walls, and uh, lots of methodical type riding. It's a great place. It's a great, great place. You got all these people on the sidelines just that's all they want to see it's is wrecked sleds, but I know how much time goes into these sleds. I don't want to see that happen. Oh, it's gonna get done right here.
ran out of talent is what he meant to say. <laughs> Beautiful day, three feet of pal. My sled's down there in a ravine. Uh, <laughs> it was a typical day for us. It's going great, man. It's been awesome. I hit snow bells. Yep. Stupid. There's no cute girls. They're never up here. It's just a bunch of guys. Redheads. I'm by myself in this situation. I just sit there, calling Saiyan, and he doesn't answer. Saiyan! I got an artistry with one hand. Back up here right now! You already ate a whole hot dog. That's when he knows to ignore me. He's getting smarter. Gathering parts. All right, let me put my helmet on and ride this girl out. I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious.
That's why I built a 155 this year. <laughs> Rodeo! So it's like, it's about seven o'clock in the morning and Keith, Keith's out, he's doing a little bit of training. Yeah, he's out there uh, warming up and making me wonder if he's gonna get back in time. <laughs> what have you been up to? Thank life for the inspiration. Okay. <laughs> George, <laughs> wish you were here. Right, wish you were here doing your job. Say that. <laughs> Take that. I'm filming how, how popular he is. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> this is why you would not want to have Tony work on your body. No. <laughs> You never know what's gonna be left behind. It's like playing Operation. So let us thank every form of guidance. All the music and all the silence. Claris is on top of us. You do. This is how you make an Arctica. <laughs> I hope that 54 Polaris still wants to sponsor me. That's 
my goal. Do you know what you're doing, Mason? I do know. Filming today. So I can be in the credits. You don't want to do the snowball interview? Oh, see, he likes interviews as much as I do. I might have to take that FXR trailer to the fairground for a second. Oh, okay. What kind of sand skinner trailer take it to the fairground, please? <laughs> Sorry, sand. I gotta pull your trailer to the fairground, buddy. You parked illegally. I'll put it underneath. It's got a little grilly good hooked up in my truck. Maybe a Facebook post? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Nothing gets parked until we say it gets parked. Was it scary at all? Yes. <laughs> it was very scary. It was not scary. There was one time when we had a, the bottom dropped down. <laughs> 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 okay, now I pretend to talk to each other. Alright, how's it going? It's placebo. It's placebo. It's placebo. It's placebo. It's placebo. It's placebo. I, just, I just say whatever I want to say. Let's think like this beautiful llama. You should really see this llama. So, what does this prove? This proves that I ride harder than Randall. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm more boost than the stalker. For one time, one time this whole season, I love the cameraman. <laughs>